is the airflow lab experiment. Um, you'll basically be learning all about the different types of flow meters that they use to measure the flow, mass flow rate through a pipe. So to start out, let's just go ahead and run through the different sections. So we'll start at the end. This is the end right here. Um, there are, I think, six different flow meters. There's the rotometer right here. Um, this is just the thermocouple. Orifice meter, another thermocouple. Nozzle meter, thermocouple. Venturi meter, thermocouple. This is a mass flow meter and a pitot tube. So all these flow meters, look them up, basically find out how they all measure the flow and the, uh, the design equations for all of them. So what's happening is basically air is coming in and going through the pipe. So let's go how to start it up. Yeah, let's go to the computer. So currently there are two computers within the UO lab, uh, but the one closest to the rotometer is the one that actually works. So make sure that you're not using Google Chrome. If you use Internet Explorer or Firefox, both of them work pretty well uh, when you get to the actual interface. So the first step is Google or Bing the BYU UO lab. <laughs> Click on the first link that you find. At this point, you're going to be in Chemical Engineering 475, so make sure you click that. And in the upper left-hand corner right here, Airflow Experiment. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is before you can start the experiment, you need to view and control the experiment itself. It's going to give you this GUI. So remember to use Firefox or Internet Explorer because it does not function on Google Chrome currently. First thing you're going to do, right-click and request control of your VI. And from there, it should turn it to, from auto, you can turn it to manual, but we're gonna keep it on auto for all intents and purposes. And then way back in the other corner, you're gonna see a little switch box over there, flip it on, and uh, that'll start your process. I think Jackson's on his way over there right now. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna keep in mind is when you turn it on, make sure that your flow rate doesn't start off too high or your rotometer can in fact go so high up that it cracks the glass and you wouldn't want that. Your, your readings are really bad when you break your equipment. So as you can see, you've got your rotometer. And uh, this is an important piece of equipment because you're going to need to take all of these readings manually. Um, and at different flow rates, you're going to realize that there's a little bit more variation between some of the readings. So you might have to be a little creative. Um, or just deal with some of the error. So before you go and turn it down, make sure that you take your flow rate and you're constantly lowering it, lowering it, lowering it. Or again, if it crashes down to the bottom, you could break your equipment. So make sure to not do that. Uh, the final thing that we're gonna take a look at is down here. You've got specify time between data points and specify number of data points. So this is gonna be the time lapse in between each of the readings that are made and how many data points you're gonna put together to obtain a single data point. Don't be confused, you're not getting 20 different data points. You're getting 20 data points that converge into a single data point. You're gonna push to record, it's gonna go green, and it's gonna start collecting some of the data once it's started uh, reading. Something to keep in mind is that even though you say five seconds in between, it doesn't actually take it every five seconds. Sometimes they are very close together and sometimes they're very far apart. Um, so if you're looking at the timestamp on the video, you'll realize that it's been more than five seconds and we're still on data point number four. Okay, so tell me a little bit about this time to steady state. How frequently do you want to take data points? Temp some of the temperature effects. Yeah, so one of the big things we worked on with this lab was figuring out um, how important it is to wait for the temperature to heat up. So as you're doing the experiment, you'll notice that as you increase the flow rate, the temperature will start to go up and then eventually reach a steady state if you allow it to. Um, so what we found in our experience was that that will improve your uh, precision of your experiment, but it won't affect your accuracy uh, waiting for the steady state. And it takes about 20 minutes, yeah, about, 20, about minutes. 20 minutes between tests if you're going up about 50 um, standard cubic feet per minute to get to that steady state value. How much does the temperature change? Uh, so for the lower flow rates, it's about 35 degrees down here at the end. Um, and then for the higher flow rates, it'll be at about 45 yeah. degrees. And so you can just kind of measure that by, this is thermocouple number four. And you'll see on the screen right here, temperature four. So if you just watch that, 
number until it's staying pretty much the same. Okay, guys, any other tips for somebody starting this experiment for the first time? Um, I think one thing also that would be useful is just realize that um, you'll need like diameters and so forth of the, the different meters. Those will be written here. So this pipe is going to be four inches diameter, and then the, there's a smaller diameter. It's 2.56, and all the tabs down to the end will also show a similar number. And then the Venturi diameter is online in the in the U11 files. You can find it in the other experiment tab.